Paul, please. Here. Mr. Waltrip. Here. Mr. Gussman. Here. Mr. Dunn. Here. Mr. Dunn is here for Mr. Hughes and Mr. Apperson. Here. Instructions, additions, comments you want to make on the minutes? Okay. And approved as read. Moving on to public hearings. Case WJP 20-001, BMRC 20-0051, 7620 Uncle's Neck, presented by Mr. Long. Good evening. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Trevor Long, uh, watershed planner here, represent WJPA 20-0001. Ms. Carla Havens, Mid-Atlantic Resource Consulting, has applied for a wetlands permit on behalf of Mr. John and Ms. Susan Whalen to construct uh, two sections of quarry stone revetments and an open pile pier on property located at 7620 Uncle's Neck within the Yarmouth Creek watershed. Um, again, on the vicinity map above, um, the blue highlighting the parcel and the surrounding area uh, being Uncle's Neck um, an aerial view of the, the parcel as a whole and the topography. It's fairly um, complex topography on the lot uh, with the shoreline um, falling fairly, fairly frequently uh, to the property line um, with two ravines uh, coming up into the property. And there, are, there is floodplain um, within this property as well, zone AE, um, determined at elevation seven. Um, current site conditions for this property include a fully wooded lot, uh, as shown in the pictures before, um, and a low bank uh, indicating signs of erosion. In order to protect the shoreline, the applicants are proposing con to construct two 150-foot sections of quarry stone revetment, resulting in zero square feet of vegetated wetland impacts and approximately 1,500 square feet um, of sand, mud, mixed flat community uh, to be impacted. Um, the site is to be accessed from both the uplands and the water, and the applicants are proposing to avoid any degradation uh, to the bald cypress uh, knees that can be found along the bank. The application does not propose whole scale bank grading, um, and any bank grading that uh, does occur um, would need to be stabilized with panicum grass and mulch uh, prior to construction. Um, so on the site plan above, the two sections of 150 foot uh, query stone revetment indicated here in yellow. Um, the cypress knees are called out here as well and the proposed pier which is outside of this board's jurisdiction. Uh, the only portion of this project being heard tonight is the revetment. Some site photographs, um, the PVC pipe here indicating the uh, limits of the revetment. Um, this is the top of the, uh, the bank um, showing the erosion that is occurring on site. Um, this, this picture was taken um, to this side and the pictures will continue just walking down the beach essentially. But um, another picture um, indicating the cypress knees that the applicant has proposed not to uh, harm. This is the sand, mud, mixed flat community uh, that was spoken of earlier. Um, however, there are no vegetated wetlands uh, proposed to be impacted. The Commonwealth of Virginia is committed to achieve a no net loss of existing wetland acreage and function and the regulatory programs in order for a proposed project to be authorized to impact wetlands and compensate for the wetland loss in some prescribed manner. The following three criteria must be met. All reasonable mitigative efforts, including an alternative siting, which would eliminate or minimize wetland loss or disturbance must be incorporated in the proposal. The proposal must clearly be water dependent in nature. The proposal must demonstrate clearly its need to be in the wetlands and its overwhelming public and private benefits. If the proposed project cannot meet one or more of the above criteria, the project must be denied or must occur in areas outside of the wetlands. Should it satisfy all three criteria, compensation for the wetland loss is required. 
The sequence of acceptable mitigation options should be as followed. On site, off site within the same watershed, mitigation banks in the same watershed, or a payment in lieu of fee. If compensation is required, it should be a condition of this permit. Staff's view of this application is that it meets all three of the criteria presented above and recommends approval of the proposal. Should the board also find the permit request meets all three of the criteria above, staff suggests the following conditions be incorporated into the permit's approval. The applicant obtain all other necessary local, state, and or federal permits as required for the project uh, to include James City County land disturbing permit and erosion and sediment control plan. All development activities located in the special flood hazard area shall comply with Article 6, Division 3 floodplain area regulations of the James City County Zoning Ordinance and receive all required approvals and permits prior to the commencement of such activities. All disturbed resource protection area uh, to be restored with Panicum Vigratum, Shenandoah, one quart plots planted on four foot centers in a triangular pattern and hardwood mulch to a depth of four inches. A surety of $2,000 uh, in place prior to the commencement of work and a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office. And that this wetland permit uh, shall expire on March 11th, 2021 if construction has not begun with written request for an extension submitted no later than January 29th, 2021, six weeks prior to the expiration date. I'd be happy to answer your questions that the board may have at this time, and thank you for your time. Um, Mr. Long, the planting that you mentioned, where is that occurring? Uh, any area that on the bank um, that would be disturbed. Uh, so above the plus four elevation? Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to open a public hearing for this case. Anyone wishing to speak to this case, please come forward. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Carla Havens, Mid-Atlantic Resource Consulting, 1095 Cherry Row Lane, Plainview, Virginia, 23156. Um, thanks, Trevor, a thorough presentation. We're trying to hold the revetment tight to the bank. You see it's, it's, it's not a straight shoreline. It's undercut. It's probably worse now than when I was there to stake it a couple months ago. So... It's a living, living shoreline in a sense. We left that 80-foot gap. Um, I don't know if you went to the site. There's, um, there's a, a cove that, um, yeah, the red line, basically. Um, it's just it, that's where the vegetated wetlands are is up in there, and it's, it's somewhat shaded. So we're leaving that alone. Is this experiencing toe scour, or is it from the upland runoff? I think it's a combination of upland runoff and the water table. Um, and I, I think the water table fluctuates a little bit, but when we get the heavy rains and it all comes down, hits a pan, and then it, it's causing the sloughing, and then the, the, the top portion over it just sinks down onto the beach. I mean, I noticed you kept the revetment fairly low, which is better, but um, also doesn't protect from larger wave energy that may, but if that's not what's causing the erosion, then I can see your point. I think the boat wakes are contributing. You know, the weekends out there are crazy, but uh, I think it's a combination of things. Thank you. That's your question. Mr. Roadley, if I may um, add to that, if you can assume that the beach was elevation zero, about a third of the project is less than six foot in height. Um, I could clearly see you to the top of the bank. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the topography drops as you, uh, the, the Mitrovic, Mitrovic property on the right and the APO1, um, we're tying into that, and that has the higher topography um, than the 150-foot section um, on the Gillespie side. Kind of compressed that you have. Do you have any experience with the Shenandoah variety, and why why did you decide to go with the name variety instead of the native? I did not. And that was uh, Mike and Trevor. That's a condition they came up with, but I believe it's been historically very successful. I, I know it's, it's, it was a slide out. It's, it's there now. 
and you saw it there when you were there. But it's unusual to pick named varieties over the native. Usually named varieties, as you know, are picked for some aesthetic characteristic. And the native varieties, those are the toughest, longest lived, healthiest. I'm if, just if, asking a question, that's all. If you want to make a recommendation and have, have Mike and yeah. Trevor swap it to something that you think is going to do better, I, I, all, I think the that's fine. I think the is an excellent choice. I would just like to have the native, now, not a named variety. Just the native, because it could be it could be a, a grass that, that was say bred and, and grown in East Georgia or somewhere in the United States that wouldn't particularly be adapted to growth in Eastern Virginia here, and uh, that's happened on some of my research plots before. And the uh, non-native grasses, named varieties, never do as well as the native variety. But I should have asked you that before. I didn't know that was your recommendation, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, Ms. Havens, I'll address that. Um, yeah, um, Mr. Apperson, that was a um, staff recommendation based on uh, what somebody else had done out there in Uncle's Neck, and they had used the Shenandoah variety, and it had really been successful. That's good. If it does well, there, um, then that's all. But yeah, that's yeah good. we'll good. make it a native uh, uh, switchgrass instead. Or do 50-50 and see what does best? I don't know. Maybe we'll do best. I think. Do, a, do a mix? <laughs> yeah. See who, who does great? Maybe they both do really well. hope so. No further questions from me? Sure. No more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else wish to speak, please, to this application? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and go for board discussion. Chairman, I think this application meets the three standards that Mr. Long referenced and uh, is a fairly minimal impact, um, so I have no issues with the project. Well, I've been out there with weekends in the summer and the boat traffic uh, really can kick up quite a wake there, and I think that's probably a lot of the erosion problems are a result of. But the project's needed. I would remind you, you that, that uh, I, I like to say, say this when I have a chance that the stumps are where the bank was 200 years ago. So it's, it's very easy to see what's going on there. I support this application also. Are we ready to vote? Mr. Anyone Chairman, motion? move that we um, motion to adopt the resolution to grant permit for wetlands board case uh, WJPA 2000, excuse me, 20. 0001, wow, you got the first one in, um, at uh, 7620 Uncle's Neck uh, with the provision that the uh, mitigation be native species. species. Chairman, could roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Uh, yes. Mr. Gusman? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. It's granted. Moving on to the next case, WJP 20002, VMRC 20017, 8408 Hicks Island Road, a bulkhead, Mr. Long. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Trevor Long, James City County Watershed Planner, here present WJPA 20002. Uh, Ms. Carla Havens, Mid Atlantic Resource Consulting, has applied for a wetlands permit on behalf of Mr. Steve and Ms. Diana Rogers to construct a vinyl bulkhead and open pile wharf on property located at 8408 Hicks Island Road within the Diaskin Creek watershed. Uh, again, on the vicinity map above, um, Hicks Island Road being here and the vicinity map of the parcel outlined in blue. Uh, the subject parcel um, where, where this project is to be located The topography um, currently, as it stands, is far steeper um, along the bank. Um, it's experiencing uh, signs of some erosion and, and uh, recession. And the floodplain, um, which affects this property zone AE at elevation uh, 7. Uh, current, currently, the site condition, uh, as I said, includes a steep bank in indicating signs of erosion and a failed bulkhead. On two separate occasions in early February, staff accompanied both members of the Virginia Marine Resource Commission and the contractor for a site visit. 
Um, the applicants are proposing to reconstruct the failed bulkhead with an 87 linear foot vinyl bulkhead in order to retain as much of the existing bank as possible. The application is also includes the construction of an open piled wharf, which falls outside of the wetlands board jurisdiction. Um, and, then, and the majority of the proposed bulkhead is also outside the board's jurisdiction as is located in the uplands. However, there is a small corner of the bulkhead that does uh, encroach into the wetland system. However, um, that is the only portion. The resource protection area and wetlands surrounding this site have been compromised with a very aggressive strain of bamboo. Um, so just landward of this, uh, this existing failed bulkhead and the proposed one um, is, is a tremendous amount of bamboo that accompanies the rest of the site. Um, it is for this reason that no other alternative shoreline protection has been proposed, such as a rock revetment. So on the site plan above, I have outlined the proposed bulkhead here in orange uh, with the, the open piled wharf here in yellow. But some site photographs um, showing the current state of the bank uh, with some severe signs of erosion. Uh, this is the original bulkhead in place. Uh, you can tell that's really moved back quite a bit since the original bulkhead was put in. Bamboo species uh, that I was speaking of earlier. Um, it's been cut down along the bank, however it does uh, protrude outside of that bank as well. Um, Similar permit request uh, to construct a bulkhead landward of a failed bulkhead on banks currently ex um, experiencing erosion have been brought to this board in the past and approved. Um, staff has noticed the projects of this nature have also failed in the past, washing away the land channelward of the newly constructed bulkhead into the wetlands. Uh, while this occurs, generally has occurred in locations with higher wave energy and velocities, staff did want to bring it to the board's attention and note it, um, not saying it's uh, bad or good. Uh, we did just want to make you aware of some of our findings from the past. Town Wealth of Virginia is committed to achieve a no net loss of existing wetlands, uh, acreage, and function and the regulatory programs. In order for a proposed project to be authorized to impact wetlands and compensate for the wetland loss in sub some prescribed manner, the following three criteria must be met. All reasonable mitigative efforts, including alternative siting, which would eliminate or minimize wetland loss or disturbance, be incorporated into the proposal. The pro proposal must be clearly water dependent in nature. The proposal must demonstrate clearly its need to be in the wetlands and its overwhelming public and private benefits. If the proposed project cannot meet one or more of the above criteria, the proposal of the project must be denied or must occur in areas outside of the wetlands. Should it satisfy all three criteria, however, a compensation for the wetland loss is required. The sequence of acceptable mitigation options should be as followed. On-site, off-site within the same watershed, mitigation banks in the same watershed, or a payment in lieu of fee. If compensation is required, it should be a condition of the permit. Staff's view of this application is that it does meet all three criteria presented above and recommends approval of this application request. Should the board also find the permit request meet all three of the criteria above, staff suggests the following conditions be incorporated into permit approval. The applicant must obtain all other necessary local, state, and federal permits required for the project. All development activities located in the special um, flood hazard area shall comply with Article 6, Division 3, floodplain, floodplain area regulations of the James City County Zoning Ordinance and receive all required approvals and permits prior to the commencement of such activities. All disturbed RPA is to be stabilized. A surety of $500 in place prior to commencement of work and a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office. The wetlands permit for this project shall expire on March 11th, 2021 if construction has not begun by that date with written requests for an extension submitted to the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division no later than January 29th, 2021, six weeks prior to the expiration date. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board has at this time. I 
don't see anyone asking, answering, you know, questions, so we thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to open the public hearing for this case. Anyone wishing to speak, please come forward. Carla Havens, Mid-Atlantic Resource Consulting, same address. Um, the uh, Rogers are here in the audience in case you have any questions that I can't answer. I would like to thank Trevor again for a thorough presentation. I'm glad he pointed out the bamboo. Um, the Rogers bought this place about three years ago and have been battling bamboo since day one. Um, they're doing a pretty good job on it, and I think you saw in the ground shots that on, on the adjacent properties, it's pretty thick, and that's what it used to look like in their backyard. Um, so they're, they're doing their best to, to keep it down. Um, you saw in the ground shot as well, the original concrete bulkhead that was there were um, on the bottom right-hand corner there. Um, we're staying feet behind it. Um, and we tried to strike the alignment completely out of the board's jurisdiction, but um, came to an agreement that that far corner has a couple, is within the board's jurisdiction. So um, that's pretty much it. Oh, and the um, this is Hicks Island, and it's on the northwest side of it. The it, It's Back Creek, and there's really no velocity, not much velocity to speak of in the, the waterway there. This island is really a, a naturalist haven. It's a great place to go, I think, and especially this area. I'm familiar with this area up in here. Someone planted that bamboo there 50 years ago so they could have a fishing pole. <laughs> See what happens. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, I didn't hear you. <laughs> I, I appreciate your offer, but I think you're going to permit it's going to go. You don't have to bribe us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak, please come forward. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing for a board discussion. Mr. Chairman, staff, a question, uh, Trevor. Um, how much of encroachment into non-vegetated wetlands is there? It's very minimal. Um, I'd say at a maximum five to ten feet. It's, it's pretty much entirely outside the board's jurisdiction. Five to ten square feet? Or linear, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's mostly just this far corner uh, here in this photo. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I think the uh, applicant has done an admirable job of pulling this back as far as they uh, did to take it out of uh, the jurisdictional resource. So I have no issue with the applicant application as proposed. Very good. Anything else? We read the vote. We need a motion from someone. I'll make a motion to... Adopt the resolution to grant the permit for wetlands board case WJPA 20 0002 slash VMRC 20 0127 at 8408 Hicks Island Road. Yeah, please have a roll call, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ridley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gusman? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. Mr. Granted. Thank you. Moving on to the last case for the Wetlands Board, WJPA 190048, 10,006 Sycamore Landing Road, Mr. Wilson. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Mike Wilson, Senior Watershed Planner. Here to present case WJPA 19-0048 at 10,006 Sycamore Landing Road, Mr. David Lambie. <clears throat> Mr. Lambie has applied for a wetlands permit to construct a riprap sill, riprap revetment, and a living shoreline on property located at 10,006 6 Sycamore Landing Road within New York River watershed. Property is further identified as James City County Tax Map Parcel 0720100002. Current site conditions for this property. Uh, well, here's the property located. Uh, on, in Sycamore Landing subdivision. Uh, back in January of this year, the board uh, reviewed and approved the adjacent property owner, Mr. Derek Amison, for a similar project. This is a continuation of that project. <clears throat> um, 2002 aerial photograph. I wanted you to keep your eye on the 
blue line here, which indicates the property line back in 2002. And at 2019, Mr. Lambie has lost all of that property. <clears throat> this is 10,010. Uh, 10, uh, Mr. Derek Amison, that, as I said in January, you all had approved a project here. And Mr. Lambie wants to continue the same project here. Um, with the uh, one caveat uh, that he is not proposing to grade uh, his bank uh, as severely as Mr. Amison did. In fact, uh, he would prefer not to grade any of the bank. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here in a couple minutes. Uh, existing topography, uh, extremely steep. Uh, in meeting Mr. Lambie out uh, in the field, he indicated sometime early to mid-2000 there was a uh, hurricane came back and uh, that's when he lost the majority of that shoreline and he's been fighting it ever since. Um, floodplain as it affects this property, it is uh, a VE zone which means there is wave action that will affect this property and that elevation can be uh, or is uh, elevation 17. From the application itself, uh, marsh tow here in yellow out at the uh, mean low water line of the property, extending up a uh, foot and a half above mean high water, the intervening area filled in with beach sand and then a rock revetment here up to elevation 10 and then Material coming from Mr. Amerson's project and project next door um, being placed in here, uh, properly compacted. And then the existing uh, failure uh, line that you'll see here in a couple of minutes, um, tying right into that, um, trying to keep the existing trees and, and grades on his property as they exist. <clears throat> From the site visit back in February, um, these stakes indicate the property line. Further away is Mr. Amison's property. The revetment would start in this area here. The um, oh, marsh tow sill would start here. And then this area would be raised up and planted uh, with Spartina. Fracture line up at the top here. This has sloughed off over time. The idea is to start the revetment here, grade that back or fill it back up and tie in as best with minimal grading up on, the, on that bank. Again, the proposed tow sill is out here. The revetment's off to your right. And this area would be backfilled and this existing um, gra uh, marsh grasses would be saved. Again, the edge of the revetment. Proposed marsh tow sill to the left. Property does, from the west to the east, uh, the height of the bank elevation does uh, decrease. The further east you go, uh, there is a gut to the uh, east of this property, and, it, and it, that does tie down. Um, so the revetment, again, tying in here, is wanting to keep uh, those large, mature trees to the best as, as possible. <laughs> Um, and then this is a, uh, another shot from the top of the bluff looking down. It's a roughly 15 foot tall on average uh, bluff there. <clears throat> so again, Mr. Lambie is proposing 80 linear feet of, of uh, marsh sill. 120 linear foot of riprap revetment, 
and approximately 300 square feet of planted uh, shoreline. Marsh toes pro uh, proposed to be constructed at the mean low water using class two armor stone, anticipated 800 square feet of subaqueous impacts. This portion of the project is outside the board's jurisdiction and must be heard by uh, the VMRC commission at, their, at a meeting. Uh, the proposed revetment will extend along the shoreline, uh, tying into Mr. Amison to the west, and then angling off at a 45 degree uh, angle to the east uh, to tie into the native grade. The living shoreline plantings are to be constructed between the revetment and the marsh toe and is proposed to be planted with the appropriate Spartina species. Sand nourishment will be imported and will match the adjacent property, Mr. Amison, uh, 10,010 Sycamore Land Road. Uh, so those grades will uh, be seamless between the two properties. As Mr. Long mentioned in both of the pre previous presentations, uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia is committed to achieving no net loss of existing wetland acreage. And in order for a proposed project to be authorized to impact wetlands and compensate for the wetland loss in some prescribed manager manner, the three criteria must be met that all reasonable mitigative efforts, including alternative sightings, which would eliminate or minimize wetland loss or disturbance be incorporated into the proposal. The proposal must be clearly water dependent in nature and the proposal must demonstrate clearly its need to be in the wetlands and its overwhelming public and private benefit. <clears throat> it is staff's view of this application that it does meet all three of those criteria and should the board find that uh, it also meets those criteria and the um, staff suggests the following conditions be incorporated into the permit approval that the applicant obtain all other necessary local, state, and federal and or federal permits required for the project that development activities located in the special flood hazard area shall comply with Article 6 Division Three floodplain area regulations of James City County zoning ordinance and receive all required approvals and permits prior to the commencement and of such activities. That the beach nourishment area shall be planted with Spartina patens and Spartina alterna flora, approximately uh, 2,000 square feet in area with two inch plugs on an 18 inch spacing triangular pattern. Planted area must also have uh, goose netting installed to prevent predation from waterfowl. The number of plugs shall be 1,100 and may be adjusted based upon final configuration of the beach nourishment area. That a surety in the amount of $4,000 be paid and in place prior to the commencement of work in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office to guarantee plant survival. That the surety will be released once a minimum of 90% survival rate is achieved at one year post planting. That the wetlands permit for this project shall expire March 11, 2021 if construction has not begun. And that if an extension of the permit is needed, that that extension be submitted no later than January 29, 2021, six weeks prior to that expiration date be happy to answer any questions the board may have regarding this application. Sure. Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Wilson, what would you um, estimate the net gain in vegetated wetlands as a result of the proposed activity? We estimated roughly 30 square feet of vegetated wetland loss. Um, so the, the project's going to have a significant uh, gain in wetlands. If there is two, th if there is 2,000 square feet that is planted, um, clearly that's 1,970 square feet of additional uh, plantings. There are some existing um, Spartina pockets that are out there. Maybe 100 square feet of existing that's left. So um, significant. I mean, it's it's pretty clear that the property has uh, undergone significant erosion over time. Um, and you mentioned tying this into the Amazon's property. 
is this essentially going to be constructed as one uh, at one time? Do you know? That's my understanding, but um, I will let Mr. Lambie address that if he so chooses. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, sir. This time we'll open the public hearing. Anyone in the audience who wishes to come speak to this application, please come forward. David Lambie, the property owner, answer any questions you might have. Uh, I have a couple issues with the staff report. First is the goose netting. Uh, geese are not a problem on that part of the York River, primarily because of the osprey and the eagles. But the biggest objection is that the York River will just take it right out. First storm comes, that's going to be debris in the river. It'll act as a gill net, trapping the fish, because it's going to be covered high tide twice a day. If there's any geese out there, which hardly ever we see any, they're going to float over top of it. If the tide goes out, they're going to be trapped behind it. So it's, it's a totally ineffective thing. The osprey, once it deteriorates, will use it for their nesting material, same as the eagles. And so it's going to be in the, in the fish system. It's going to be in the uh, uh, waterfowl. Yeah. It'll just deteriorate over time. Mr. Lambie, would you be amenable to, um, if it becomes necessary because of goose predation, to install some goose netting? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because we I don't see any way understand. goose netting... You, you almost have to have a five-foot high chain link fence. First time a log comes floating down, it'll catch in it and just take it right out. I mean, we've seen it on some of our um, mitigation sites where they do come in and just pluck all the, yeah. the plugs out. But, you know, when I've seen it, it's usually sticks with string run across the top so they can't land in it. But if, it's not, if it doesn't become a problem, I can see not requiring it up right. front. But if it is... To uh, exercise. Like I say, geese have, I've lived out there 41 years and geese have never been a problem. Understood. And then the second thing is just a surety bond. We're just, we're adding grass to the existing shoreline. I mean, I've done that for years. The grass that's there, as the grass has come back, has been planted. And, uh, you know, a 4,000 surety bond, I can plant the whole thing for $1,400. So you're asking three times the cost of the plantings for a surety bond. And according to the state, I don't need a permit in the existing shoreline to replenish my grass. So that shouldn't be a, a problem. All we're doing is basically, according to Karen Doring from VIMS, the water level coming up is drowning the grass. So we're tr putting the sill there to hold additional sand to cover it over. The grass that's there will come up through the, through the sand so there's no loss there. We're just adding more plantings. And hopefully that won't erode away with the sill. But 10 years from now, I'm not sure how long it'll last. Understood. If we don't do anything, there'll be no grass there. Um, we can talk to staff about that, uh, re that request. The... Will this be constructed at the same time, Amazons? I know access was an issue. Or, or uh, if you're not going to do it with the Amazons, are you going to access it through I your property? I would like to do it with the Amazon Amazons. Depends on the contractor. I've had a very hard time getting their contractor. He drew up some of the plans, but it's hard to get him to do anything. So they want to start building next month, and nothing's been done yet. And that's why I applied for the permit on my own to try to stay in sync with their timetable. If, if they don't go to construction, can it be constructed through your property? I can go through my, yeah, I'd rather not because I'll get compaction from the trucks and, and everything. And plus I'm getting their, you know, we're getting their dirt, which is a lot of sand for down at the beach area. But if they, if they don't go ahead, I'll do it on my own. Understood. Thank you. Thanks. Questions? If not, we'll close this public hearing now and uh, open it up for board discussion. Mr. Chairman, I think we have an outstanding question for staff on the surety. I certainly do. Our 
question about that. Staff does not object to lowering the surety. Um, Mr. Lambie gave us a cost, which normally we don't have when we calculate sureties. Um, so I would, if it's not objectionable to Mr. Lambie, I would propose a thousand dollar surety instead of the four. Uh, and the reason for that is to guarantee that those plantings do survive. That's for a period of one year? One year. And, that, and then that money would be returned to him. And is that a, a check or a letter of credit or is it however, cash money? However he wants to, um, whatever form he wants to, to do that in. It could be a personal check, it could be a letter of credit, it could be a bond. Yeah. Um, typically on cool. projects like that, it's, it's a personal check or cash. So. Personal check, you hold that until... Just so you don't cash your check. You just no, we would. We, we have to turn that into the treasurer's so office. You do have to cash it. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Questions? I think we have a question for Mr. Lambie. Is that is, is that is that acceptable? Okay. Thank you. It's going to be a considerable expense for you, isn't it, Mr. Lambie? If you have to truck that much sand in. If, the, if you can't get it from the construction next door, you're looking at a tremendous cost there. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a good, yeah. All right. Do we have a motion? I'll yeah. motion to uh, adopt the resolution to grant the permit for Wetlands Board Case WJPA 19 tax 0048 slash BMRC 19 TAC 2163 at 10006 Sycamore Landing Road. And that's with the modifications to the... With the modification of $1,000. Okay. Sure. And the goose netting. Okay. All right, right. Miss, Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. Thank you. According to my itinerary, that's the last permit case we have. We'll move on to board considerations. And it says none here. Does anybody have anything they want to bring up? Special privilege? Anything you want to say? Shall we have a motion? I'm sorry. I didn't see you over there, Michael. What you got to say? Uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to uh, reiterate, I believe I've told you in the past, this room will not be available for the August board, room, uh, board meeting. We are proposing to move it to Building D in the conference room where we had the work session. Thank you. Thank you very much. So a motion to adjourn. Uh, um, oh, can you want to move, please? Miss <laughs> uh, Havens would like to speak. Oh, okay. If, if you would allow that, sir. Of course, we'll allow it. Yes, please. Carla Havens, Mid Atlantic Resource Consulting. I brought my son with me this evening. His name is Cade. He's 17 years old. He's going to be graduating from West Point High School this spring. He's been helping me uh, quite a bit this summer and, and uh, through these the fall and winter months. So don't be surprised if he shows up at one of the hearings without me. He, um, he's, he's well trained. He's, he's got a good eye and, and he knows what he's doing. So. Thank Good you. to meet you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Now can we go? Mr. Jim? Move to adjourn. Okay, we're adjourned, Mr. Chairman. Oh, okay. I'd like to uh, call to order the James City County uh, Chesapeake Bay Board. Um, the responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy to protect against and minimize pollution and deposition of sediment in wetlands, streams, and lakes in James City County, which are tributaries of the Chesapeake Bay. Ms. Parman, will you call the brawl, please? Mr. Rodley? Here. Mr. Waltrip? Here. Mr. Gussman? Here. Mr. Dunn? Here. Mr. Dunn is here for Mr. Hughes. Mr. Apperson? Here. Let's see, we have three sets of minutes, I believe, to, uh, to approve our, uh, the minutes from our January 15th meeting, um, our regular board meeting, our, the minutes from our February 12th, meeting and we had a special board meeting on February 26. Are there any problems with any of the minutes, corrections or additions? No, sir. 
Okay, the minutes from those three meetings then now stand approved. Next order of business are public hearings, and our first case is CBPA 20-0003-168 Nottingham Shire. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Mike Wilson here to present case CBPA 20-0003-168 Nottingham Shire. <clears throat> Mr. Larry Walk of Walk Right Construction has applied for a Chesapeake Bay exception on behalf of Mr. Edward Kianka for encroachments into the RPA buffer for the construction of a single family dwelling on property located at 168 Nottinghamshire within the Fords Colony subdivision. And that property is highlighted here in blue within section 12 of um, Fords Colony, which is accessed. Uh, immediately off of Long Hill Road here. Aerial fo photograph of the property. It is uh, completely wooded at this time. There is a, uh, and I'll go ahead and point this out, uh, a walking trail for the community that um, encroaches on 168 Nottinghamshire. Although it's not in the staff report and it's not a condition of, the, of any approval or disapproval that this board may grant, Ford's Colony has uh, agreed to move this trail off of this property into the uh, previously platted uh, access uh, here. And that's going to that's gonna happen regardless of any action this board takes. <clears throat> Sanitary sewer uh, does run through the bottom third of this property. Gravity sewer going um, from the bottom of the page to the top of the page, flowing downhill. Topography of the site from the road, the high point uh, going down approx uh, approximately 10% grade um, to a stormwater facility, uh, dry timber wall, it's a timber wall facility here um, located in the common area. But this BMP does affect the lower portion of this property. The RPA, as it affects the property, taking up uh, the majority of the property, in fact, it's uh, approximately 85% of the property. From the application, the limits of wetlands here, this green line, we're, we'll highlight that again. Um, those are non-tidal. The 50-foot RPA line, as it affects this property here, and then the 100-foot coming up with the street being down here where the tidal is. This easement here is um, the easement we were talking about um, with the, the nature trail in it. Conservation easement also exists on this property. It's shown here with this orange line. And it, the drainage and utility easement here. This easement also uh, is for BMP access and maintenance. And that BMP structure, again, is immediately off the page. And then the proposed house uh, driveway here. Entry walk, a couple porches. Those clearing limits uh, in this area, 15 feet away from the back of the house, um, not encroaching into the wetland system, which has been flagged out in the field. <clears throat> Due to the nature of the wetland system, there are no opportunities for infiltration, the groundwater. Uh, in the, this part of the lot is too high. I want to go ahead and point that out. From the street looking in, approximately uh, where the front door it will be located, see some flags here. Uh, that's the structure location. From the approximate driveway location as it crosses the sidewalk, um, this does drop off uh, significantly a couple feet at first and then um, relative 
uh, straight grade down to the, the rear of the lot. The nature uh, community trail I mentioned previously. Um, one corner of the house, I believe, is where this flag is. So um, these hollies and the trail will be readjusted accordingly. <clears throat> corner of the one corner of the house here. And you can see the, the flagging in the trees that would be um, close to the, uh, the walking trail here. And from the front area again, uh, driveway cut through. And from the other side of the property, uh, another property corner here. And at the near the rear of the property, you can see it sloping from the right to the left in this photograph. Um, Non-tidal wetlands are down here, and that is also uh, part of the stormwater feature, um, the elevations associated with the various storms that that BMP does control. <clears throat> total lot size of this property is 0.47 acres and as I stated previously 85% of it is impacted with uh, RPA. Um, currently again the site's uh, vacant and completely wooded with wetlands at the rear. They are proposing a single family dwelling resulting in 1,130 square feet of impervious area within the seaward 50 foot RPA and 2,731 square feet of impervious area within the landward 50. Um, that would be a total of 3,861 square feet of impervious cover. <clears throat> the amount of planting mitigation that that requires is 10 units and that is what the applicant has proposed. Uh, and that's 10 canopy trees, 20 understory trees, and 30 shrubs. And although a mitigation plan has not yet been submitted, um, and that's what they are proposing, staff would suggest that only half of the required plantings be planted due to the wooded nature of the lot, and the other half um, be paid into the county's Chesapeake Bay Restoration Fund in the form uh, or in the amount of $3,750. We will uh, leave that decision up to the applicant. Uh, also, staff is um, would the mitigation surety for that amount of mitigation would be $5,000, and that would be, have to be in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office. So the staffs, the, the board may grant exceptions to section 237 if the application meets the following five conditions. That the exception request is the minimum necessary to afford relief. That granting the exception will not confer upon the applicant any special privileges denied by chapter 23 of the James City County Code to other property owner, owners similarly situated in the vicinity, that the exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of the chapter of chapter 23 of the James City County Code and is not of substantial detriment to water quality, that the exception request is not based on conditions or circumstances that are self-created or self-imposed, mm -hmm nor does the request arise from conditions or circumstances either permitted or non-conforming that are related to adjacent parcels, and that reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed, which would prevent the exception request from causing a degradation of water quality. Staffs reviewed the application, and we feel that it does meet all five of these conditions, and we do recommend approval of the exception request. Should the board find that the exception request meets all five of those conditions. Staff does suggest the following conditions be incorporated into that approval. That the applicant obtain any other necessary federal, state, and local
permits as required for the project. The planting of 10 canopy trees, 20 understory trees, and 30 shrubs, or the planting of five canopy trees, 10 understory trees, and 15 shrubs, and a payment of $3,750 $3, into the Chesapeake Bay Restoration Fund, and a surety of $5,000 to be in place prior to the commencement of work in a form acceptable to the James City County Attorney's Office, that the exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun by March 11, 2021, and that any written request for an extension to this uh, exception shall be submitted to the Stormwater Resource Protection Division no later than six weeks prior to that expiration date, which is January 29, 2021. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have on this matter. Um, I have a question about the planning units. Um, can, is there even room to put in 10 canopy, canopy trees and 20 understory trees? It is, it is staff's opinion that there is not, uh, which is why we're going to uh, give them an option to plant only half of uh, what would technically be required. <clears throat> um, we don't feel going less than half of the required mitigation would be uh, a sound uh, pro, uh, decision. Any other questions for the staff? Mr. Wilson, do you, um, how are they treating the runoff from the structure? Um, the As I stated previously, there's no room or, or the ground, the soils don't allow for any infiltration. So it's just going to be uh, surface runoff from roof leaders, uh, filtering through grass and then uh, any of the uh, mitigation and then the wooded line, the, the woods. Um, question, um, in terms of process question, when they go to clear this lot, do you or does somebody from the county typically inspect the limits of clearing? Yes, we do. Uh, we do have staff that um, will look at the uh, single family drawing that once it's submitted for building permits, uh, they'll approve all ENS measures on that and then they will go out and inspect prior to the building permit being issued that it's been cleared properly and all the correct erosion sediment control measures are in place. How did the uh, nature trail get off? That's a great question, Mr. Waltrip. Um, I, nobody in this room, I believe, has a great answer for that. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, uh, how does the size of the proposed dwelling compare to the other uh, uh, dwellings that we've seen come in front of the board? Um, in this neighborhood, they are comparable. Um, I don't have an exact measurement on this house in, in, or either structure on either side of the property, but they're similar in size. Um, the, if you were to take this house and put it here, that's about the same, roughly the same impact on that property as what's being proposed. Mm -hmm. There's no, I, I looked at it and I, I don't see any easy way to pull it further, you know, out of the 50 foot buffer. Is there no way to rotate it or, well? Um, no, it's not. The front setback line is here. It's 30 foot setback line. But if you'll remember from the photographs, there is a sidewalk that is um, right outside the property line. So this driveway is only 30 feet deep. That's the front of the garage is basically on the front setback line. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Walk could correct me if I happen to be misstating that. <laughs> Any other questions for the staff? All right. 
At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward and address the board? Gentlemen, I'm Larry Walk with Walkright Construction. Um, Mike, thank you very much for that. Um, I would like to add to Mike's um, report that we have built this identical house on a very similar size lot in the same section of the neighborhood and that was approved by staff uh, or excuse me approved by the board within two years of today um, I do think we've made an attempt to pull the house as far forward to the right away from the sensitive area as we can um, the previous house that was approved was a courtyard design here we've gone with front load to try to further minimize the um, impact to the wetlands thank you any questions for the applicant how do you intend to I mean are you just going to downspouts and let it run well we'll put downspouts with pop-ups uh, typically 10 feet away from the site yeah we'll eventually end up on the right away on it the sewer Excuse right me. away it, the runoff will eventually end up on the sewer right away it will in the yeah, back it's the only right place the it can go yeah. yeah thank you would anyone else like to speak on this issue hey at this time i'll close the public hearing uh, any discussion from the board? Mr. Chairman, I tend to concur with staff's um, uh, position, recommendation on this application. I, you know, there's, there's no really good way to further minimize impacts, um, given that the ordinance came into effect after this lot was, lot was platted, at least with the revisions. Uh, I don't see how to further minimize in this case. Um, I have no objection to the project I pretty much feel the same way okay um, would someone like to make a motion I would like to mr. chairman for the uh, we have a motion to uh, adopt CBA 20 168 Nottinghamshire single-family dwelling okay all right we have a motion motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception um, Ms. Parmin, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Waltrip? Yes. Mr. Gessman? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. Okay, motion uh, carries in the exceptions granted. Thank you for coming out. Uh, that concludes our public hearings. We have four matters for uh, the board to consider. Mr. Chair, members of the board, the first three of these uh, board considerations are permit extensions. Um, I'd like to go through all three of them at the same time. Um, and if uh, the board has questions on it, we can pull it separately. Uh, the first one uh, is for Colonial Heritage. It is for CBPA 19-0037. They are uh, seeking a one-year extension to this project. Um, it exp actually expires in May. They wanted to get in early. They will not be able to start. Can I interrupt you for one second? Yes, Wait, sir. Which, which one is? Four, uh, I'm sorry. I don't have them in order that they're listed. It's 499 Jolly Pond Road. Okay. That's okay. And that's for who? Colonial Heritage. Okay. Um, they, they can't get to construction of this section of Colonial Heritage before the uh, exception will expire. So they're asking for a one-year extension. Staff does agree uh, with, uh, with all the permit conditions being the same except for the expiration date being pushed out to May 13, 2021. Uh, the second one I have is for... Um, 7515 Oak Cove Road, CBE 17-048. Ms. Jennifer Privet is asking for either a one-year or a two-year permit extension or exception extension. Um, this is her third request. The board has granted the previous two one-year extensions. Um, she's had uh, some problems, some difficulties uh, family difficulties in getting this project started. Um, 
she did initially request a one-year extension, and I counseled her that um, once the board starts getting to um, three, four, five extension requests, they start getting a little antsy. Um, and if she wanted to make this her last one, she should ask for a two-year extension. I told her I would present both. It would be the board's decision. Um, so if it's a one-year extension, that permit would, exp uh, would expire March 11, 2021. And if it is a two-year uh, extension, that would expire March 11, 2022. <clears throat> and then the third one before the board is 4447 Pleasant View Drive. Ms. Rennie Andrews um, has, is seeking a one-year extension to her memorial patio that the board approved. Uh, she's having issues with her HOA fixing sinkholes in her backyard near where this project is projected to be located and wants the HOA uh, to resolve those issues before she starts her project. And she has uh, asked for a one-year extension. This is her second request. And staff does concur with that, with all permit conditions being the same except for the expiration date, which would be March 11, 2021. Board has any questions on any three of these? What, uh, what was the Oak Cove project again? It was a house addition. Um, Just putting in a one room, put, one, one room on the house. What's that? It was to put one one room out of. It was one room added to an existing structure. Um, and the board did approve it back in 2017 originally. Um, the only the only issue is on that one is whether it would be if the board so chooses to grant the exception whether it's a one year or a two year extension. I I, I guess I don't have any problems. Although I think I said I said in this case don't don't, don't come back for another extension. Um, no, sir, that wasn't this particular case. But you have said that in the past. I, I knew it. Um, well, none of them are controversial in my my opinion, so I don't really see any harm with the extensions. I'm okay with two years for Oak Cove Road. It's good. Yes, absolutely. Do we need to, do we need to vote on these? I think you can vote all of them at the same time, and you can do a voice vote if you'd like. All those in favor of granting the extent, extension signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the extensions are granted. Okay, we have a, a resolution acceptance request. Um, yes, at 25. 29 William Tankard back in August of 20, 2019, uh, this board approved the swimming pool within the RPA uh, shown here of uh, 226 square feet of impervious cover. Um, due to various factors, a this plan was not submitted to the building permit, uh, building permits and safety for their approval. A separate, different plan was submitted. Um, staff did not catch that uh, discrepancy, and that plan had gotten a, approval from a different uh, department within the county. That plan is what was built. <clears throat> when staff found out, uh, we sent a notice of violation. Um, and we sat down with uh, Jamie and Amanda Stallings uh, several times to discuss resolution to the matter. <clears throat> and this is, this is what was ended up being built, um, 1,365 square feet of impervious cover. Um, we have reached a resolution with the Stallings that 
Well, let me, let me digress back to the first plan. On this plan, they had proposed 226 square feet of impervious cover. They had also proposed three planting units as mitigation. Um, Mr. Long and myself went out and, and looked at this property, uh, took photographs back in February last month, and they have planted their three planting units that they had uh, proposed originally. <clears throat> In, dis in discussing the issue with them, staff came up with a mitigate, we came up with the mitigation rate that would have been required for this amount of impervious cover within the RPA. Because it was unauthorized by this board, we doubled that rit mitigation rate and that the original, the mitigation rate for this amount of square, uh, square foot of impact would have been three planting units. We doubled that to six. Um, and then we gave them credit for the three that they planted. So in effect, they still, quote unquote, owed three planting units of mitigation. There is no place left on this property without clearing additional, pro additional lands to plant anything, any canopy trees or understory. So we proposed that they um, pay into the mitigation trust fund that the county has set up a dollar amount of, and I didn't write this down, uh, I think it's $2,250 into the Chesapeake Bay Restoration Fund. <clears throat> if I have that figure wrong, we do have it in writing somewhere, and that would be the figure we would use. Um, they have agreed to this. Um, we have not proposed as a final resolution any civil charge penalties um, due to the complicating factors of, of uh, the multiple uh, plan approvals and... Um, Mr. Wilson, are you saying it's the, the county was somehow culpable in the plan review process? It, would, it could appear that way. Um, certainly our staff, stormwater division staff, did not catch that discrepancy. Um, and we have both of the, we had the opportunity to review that. Um, they provide explanation as to why they submitted two different plans. It was submitted by two separate contractors and lack of communication. Um, the one who submitted for this board's approval was a representative of H.H. H. Hunt, and the one who submitted for the building permits was a representative of the pool contractor. There's a pretty big discrepancy between 226 square feet and 1,365 square feet. Um, um, The county uh, going has the county taken steps to make sure something like this doesn't happen again. Uh, we have altered our plan review processes. Um, we have beefed them up to catch issues like this in the future. Um, that doesn't do anything to resolve this issue. Right, but, but yeah, um, I, I don't. We we have altered our processes to. Uh, we're working uh, in better cooperation with building permits and safety. I, personally, I, I don't blame the county for this, quite frankly, because the applicants are responsible for the applications they submit. And, um, you know, they hire and engage the contractors to do work on their behalf. And, um, I agree with you. I, this is a vast departure from what was approved. The county did get compensated for this. I'd like that you all, the county, has come to a agreement with applicants. Uh, um, because the impacts are more than what the board approved, staff will not approve um, 
what was done. We've only we've reached a tentative resolution based upon uh, the discussion that uh, y'all are having right now. Um, you are the board that can authorize additional impacts. If certainly, if the impacts had been less, we would we would do, have done that as an administrative change. Mm -hmm. You know, this puts us in a tough position because when we we approve a project, we expect you know what what's been approved, not a you know a, a huge increase in the project. Um, but then again, you know, it could be an honest mistake, you know, miscommunications. I, you hate to order something ripped out. It's already been built. Um, I'm not sure we would have, you know, approved this. What was, what was actually built? They know you're presenting this tonight? Yes, sir. Um, they asked if they should be here. I suggested that they would. Uh, it, I said they showed up, but it wasn't mandatory. I, I mean, it's a lot of work done. I hate to see the money, uh, you know, wasted, and I hate to, yeah, you know, I hate to see everything torn up and uh, a lot of mud running off the site, regardless. Um, um, I really don't know really what happened. Right. I mean, we could we could defer this right to our next meeting and uh, you can and, and request. You know some better explanation of of how, how this project got built if you would like the stallings to be here um i will reach out to them and we, we can def defer this till next month you the applicant oh okay i'm sorry oh i'm sorry <laughs> cool c come on up then and uh, let's hear what happened with this uh, i'm sorry i didn't i didn't recognize you earlier Board. My name is Jamie Stallings. I'm one of the applicants here. Uh, my wife couldn't be here this evening. She had to take my son to a doctor's uh, appointment this afternoon. Um, so this whole process has been an absolute debacle from the beginning. So we, and I don't want to bore you with a really long story, but to give you a brief synopsis of what has happened and what has transpired, we built a home in the neighborhood of Landfall, and we asked the HH Hunt builder when we went to buy the house or to buy a lot to build a house, which lot can we build a pool on? And so the salesperson took us to a lot that we could build a pool on. We go to this lot. She said, this is the only one that will suffice for what you're trying to do. So we purchased the lot. After we get the, the house, actually before the house was even built, uh, we had the architect from HH Hunt go out, measure from the stakes that they put in the ground that we would be able to put actually a 20 by 40 foot pool in our backyard. Um, and they said, yep, we see no problem with that. Um, so fast forward, we build our house. We have the pool guy submit a application for a pool for us in our backyard. And it was denied because of the RPA and there's a buffer that goes right through the middle of our backyard that no one explained to us, the builder, no one. So at that point, my wife and I are upset because we built a house and they're telling us we can't put the pool in the backyard and that was the only reason why we bought that particular lot. So we get H.H. Hunt involved, who's the builder, and I say, either you're going to buy my house and move me because you sold me a house uh, that I can't put a, a pool in or we're going to get this resolved. So they had their architect draw up some plan that I guess was submitted to you for 200 and 26 square feet of impervious area. We didn't see it. It went, I thought that this gentleman, the, the architect for HH Hunt, came to the board meeting. He actually let me know he did not come to the board meeting. He gave the plan to Mike Wilson, who Mike Wilson came up like he has today and presented this to you all as a board. Uh, that, at that point, I think there was some back and forth and you guys said, okay, this is the plan. And at this point, we've still never seen it. I'm asking the architect, did we get an approval? Did we not? He comes back eventually and says, yes, I'll let you know when I have a copy of it. I said, I'd like to see it. It's like, okay. Well, 
he said, but in the meantime, <coughs> you guys are approved. You can get the pool guys to get your permit. The pool guys go to the county to get a permit. They issued them the original permit that was not the one that you guys approved. It was the original plan that the pool guys submitted to the county that was disapproved because of the RPA and everything else. So at that point, we get a letter in the mail saying what you have isn't going to work at the end of everything and saying that they put the pool in the wrong place and you put too much to this and too much that and there's this and that. Um, we actually went above and beyond the planting and all that stuff. We just did that on our own, uh, put river rock, all this different stuff in our backyard. Uh, we ended up meeting with Mike Wilson who says that unfortunately the plan that was issued to the pool guys the way that it looks currently today, that is what the plan that was issued to the pool guys. So they built the, the pool in our backyard exactly like the plan that they were given was said. Fast forward to December, I get a letter from the county saying that we're being essentially sued or fined because we didn't follow the plan. We don't know anything about it. When we go to meet with Mike and Trevor, they showed us the actual plan. I was like, well, this is the first time we've seen that the one that you got approved, <coughs> unfortunately, I ask, what is the process after you go to the board and you present what you're saying, the new revised plan, that's got to come back to the county somehow and get approved and then issued to the pool people, the contractor that you pay to build it. And they said, well, yes, but unfortunately our systems are a little antiquated and unfortunately that didn't happen, but the ultimate responsibility falls on you. And I'm like, I, I didn't issue a permit. I didn't come to the board to apply for anything. I didn't know that I even asked and they said we didn't have to. So here I am now and I'm all, after all of this is said and done, I'm still having to write a check for $2,200 for a pool and a deck and everything that's in my yard that was the original plan. And I understand that it's affecting the groundwater and all that, so I am sympathetic to that which is why we came to the resolution that I would write a $2,250 check to the county, even though in my wife and I's eyes, we didn't do anything wrong. We didn't, we hired people to do this and the county didn't do their part of actually getting the correct permit issued to the pool builder. So here I am now, I'm having to write a check for another $2,200 after I've put a $100,000 pool in my backyard because there was some mix up of how and what was supposed to have happened. So again, my wife and I, because we just want this to be done, we're tired of dealing with this. We haven't even been able to use our pool because it didn't get done until November. And we're still dealing with the fact that it's possibly in the wrong spot or put too much stuff on the ground or whatever it was. So now here we are today before you all, for you to make it a, a tough decision, I understand, but again, None of this was my wife and I's fault that the county issued the incorrect permit. But I am willing to write the $2,250 check because, like Mike said, um, the architect did provide a revised mitigation plan to plant more trees and everything else, but there really is no room in the backyard. I mean, it's got a fence around it. And unless you're planting basically more into the RPA, more trees and more whatever, I mean, I don't think that we're going to do that. Um, I don't I don't think that it's I don't think you can do that. So at this point the only thing we could do was write a check to the Chesapeake Bay Board Fund to to pay for the mitigation and according to the thing if it's 1,365 square feet and we went over by that much that was essentially three planting units which he said we did plant three I think it was probably more than that but we planted three planting units but because it's not what the original plan was approved by you. Now I have to pay for another three planting units. So obviously I'm not happy with any of this. My wife's not happy. The county and along with you all are not happy with this. So it's a complete, and I, I'm sorry for taking so much time, but I'm glad that they told me that I could come tonight to at least explain what happened because this was by no means at all anything that we did that's why we hired somebody to do it, so we didn't do that. Thank you very much for coming out and explaining that to us. It makes yeah. Thank you. Hope that explains yeah. it.
I'm sorry you had to go through all this. There were a lot of errors committed, and, and you certainly uh, were not responsible for them. All right, if we approve this, you'll be, you'll be able to sleep at night and uh, get this over yes. with. Yes, and, and I'm sure that you guys are not willing to forego the extra three planting units because we did go over. I mean, if, if you would, I would be more than grateful than you know, just because I, you know, because of all the way this worked out. But I have already said I would. But if, if you guys would at least take that into consideration, I would be appreciative of that. Like, this doesn't have to go to the Board of Supervisors, does it? Okay, so whatever we approve, <coughs> this ends the matter. Well, I, I'm I satisfied. Think, I think the gentleman has gone through a lot. Yeah. And if it I was, voted to call it even. If you call it even. And yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. So, to, to, what do we to, need? No, uh, to, we're gonna Mr. Chairman, Mr. Stallings, um, who submitted the first application? You said it was H.H. Hunt? The, the pool guys submitted the actual building permit to build a pool. But who submitted, that was the, disapproved who, who submitted the, the application to this board? That was H.H. Hunt. There's a architect. His name is, uh, I've got it in my phone. I, I can't was that on your behalf or was that just done? That was, like I said, because we were frustrated with H.H. Hunt because they let us build a house on a property that the, all of a sudden we tried to put in the permit. Because literally right as soon as we got the house built, we were like, all right, here we go. Let's put in a permit to build the pool that we wanted. And it immediately got denied. And so we're like, oh, wow. And so I called H.H. H. Hunt and an attorney immediately and said, this is, there. you got to be kidding me. What do you mean I can't build a pool? I had an architect in the woods. I got chigger bites all over me one day. Literally, they're still, it was still wooded. They hadn't even cleared the lot. And he said, give that him he will this be able plan when, when, when they said that they were going 100%. To... He had the, the everything. You know why he submitted a different plan? Well, so the original, I'm saying the original plan was submitted by the pool guys. Um, after, and what's his name? Because you work with him a lot. He, he said he knew him. him. Yeah, please. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Sure. I, I have to apologize to Jamie. I didn't see him sitting back there. Um, Jonathan Kramer uh, from H.H. H. Hunt uh, um, submitted this plan once uh, Mr. Stallings or the pool guys, I'm not sure who, got um, our comment letter that said we need uh, impervious area cal calculation, we need uh, dimensions, distances. Uh, there's a list of four or five or six items in that comment uh, letter. And then in response to that, um, Mr. Kramer submitted this plan. Mr. Kramer have been silent on why he submitted a different plan? Or, if, or he's not available to ask that question? He, he's, um, the original plan, we couldn't <coughs> determine how far it was going to be into the RPA because there were no dimensions off the back of the house or to a property corner or, or anything. It was rectangle in the backyard. Um, so <clears throat> in response to that, he submitted this. Um, I can't answer for him. Uh, but Mr. Stallings was cut out of this process because they were going to take this on on their own. That's my understanding. All right. Thank you. I make a motion that we decide to vote on this and call, just call it even. A mistake, no charges placed on the homeowner. I'm, I'm sorry, confused. What do we have to make a motion? What, what, what's the, what's the pro process now? Well, so we're clear on what we're approving. Can we have the exact amount that's included in the resolution? Do you have that? $2,250. Okay. Okay, so can, can you state the motion for us? Um, just that um, you would be uh, agreeing with the staff's resolution to this issue um, that uh, three additional planting units would be required and instead of planting them that the Stallings are going to pay a into the Chesapeake Bay Restoration Fund a sum of $2,250 <clears throat> and there will be no civil charge. That's not what I said. Not, I don't think. I, I, I'm of the opinion that I don't think we should charge them anything. 
I don't see where they did anything wrong. They shouldn't be charged anything. Mr. Grant. Mr. Chairman, um, so I think uh, the board's sentiment is that the impact as built was adequately miti mitigated with the three planting units that were planted. And while I can appreciate staff's recommendation, I think it's the board's desire to approve this uh, additional encroachment with the mitigation that has already been planted. That's, That's the sense of the board. board. I said it. Thank you. Okay. And so the, the, the three plantings for the square footage that it is right now is acceptable. No additional. With no, uh, with no additional plantings. That's if that's what the board decides. Then no, yeah. No, I'm asking if that's the actual uh, mitigation, the three plantings for one thousand. Yes, three would have been required for that amount of impervious cover. That is correct. And they're and they're they're done, right? They're they're all yes, done. Yes, it's already planted. Okay, and we're not going to ask for any payments into the. I'm glad you came out and explained it to us. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and. Uh, we hate to see any citizen, you know, go through this, and, um, and it was an unfortunate uh, experience for you. Okay. And we don't want to compound it. <laughs> okay. So everyone's clear on uh, the motion. Can we have a, a, a voice vote? Will that suffice? I'll go ahead and do a roll call, actually. This is a resolution of the Okay. Board. Okay. So motion to... Um, not offer any civil penalties and no payment into the Chesapeake Bay Fund. That is correct. Okay. Mr. Roadley? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. All right. I hope it ends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't have total confidence, though, in our engineers and our people. I have to say that. I yeah. Okay. Um, that c I believe that that concludes our board considerations. We have no matters of special privilege. Uh, Can we have a motion to adjourn, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gusman? All those in favor, Mr. Gusman. Mr. Gusman. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> one one special concern item again, <laughs> uh, as mentioned at the Wetlands Board meeting, the August meeting will not be held in this room, but will probably be o held. Aug August. August. Okay. Yeah be held in Building D conference room. Okay. Um, make sure that announcement gets out. Does it look times. like we will have a meeting next month? Yes. Okay. I can, I, just for clarity, I, while I can appreciate that the county feels um, somewhat bad about the last case, the mix up on H.H. H. Hunt's part is hard to forgive, not, not for him, I'm not talking about Mr. Stallings, but um, that almost strikes of deception. If they were aware of his plan and they submitted something different, I'm... Yeah. <coughs> Understood. Yeah, like, re review all their submit submittals very closely in the future. Boy, I don't want to see this happen again. You sure you sent us a note about the 20th, right August? Okay. Can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Move. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We are adjourned.